It's December 30th, 2013, and I'm doing, uh, I guess I could call it some of my early layout work for compressed air system for clearing chips. Got some of the parts laid out here, trying to figure out how I'm going to run everything together so that I can hook a compressed air system up to the uh, head of Tormach, particularly the uh, existing uh, coolant uh, bracket bolts there. Normally I have my coolant manifold attached there, but if I'm not running coolant and I'm running air, I can replace this, drop the, uh, drop the coolant manifold out, and put the uh, air manifold in. So, I'm just putting the pieces together right now to try to figure out how I'm going to do it. Uh, basic idea here. Uh, shut off valve, it's not going to be computer controlled uh, coolant at all. Uh, so it'll be manually operated there. Uh, a couple of bends to get down around the jog that is right, ooh, there's my finger, there it is. Get down around the jog here, it's gonna come up over the top, down, and then in, in. so that's what you're seeing here with these jogs. Then these uh, P-clamps will attach to those bolts. My uh, machine to bracket the last time I did it, because uh, I wanted something rock solid. Uh, taking a slightly different approach this time, uh, just for expediency. The whole idea of this is speed. I spend most of my time running flood coolant and as of right now I don't have any reason to make a big deal out of uh, air so I figured I'd do it as quickly as possible. I was making these parts right here. 17.4 stainless the material. Uh, this is uh, condition A so it's fairly sticky so a lot of... Um, it doesn't make the best chips I should say. Not as bad as some of the other stuff I've messed around with but it's not fantastic either. Anyway, I was uh, chipping the edges off of flutes, so I figured I better get an air blast system in here to run this. So that's what I'm working on right now. Got some pieces put together here, and uh, I'm going to mock up a couple pieces in this area to see what I need to do. So I should sort of build this as I go until I figure out exactly how I'm going to set it up. No sweat here. I, uh, I mean, literally, that's four dollars right there. I went as cheap as I possibly could on this, just to sort of get it done. And I'll upgrade it later. I just can't wait anymore to get a, uh, a compressed air system in. So let's do it. All right, here's a quick update. So got pieces laying all over the place here. The manifold is starting to come together. I have it. Uh, some pieces fixed in there. I don't know what the length is going to be yet. Uh, one is going to probably come around this way and be directed over in this area. The other one will be on the back side. I want them about 180 degrees apart, maybe 120 degrees. Uh, something like that, somewhere in that range. Uh, got the shutoff valve on there. It fit in there fine, uh, even though it's larger than the, uh, than the half inch copper tube. That wasn't a problem. The P-clamps offered enough standoff uh, between the uh, mill head and the pipe that it wasn't an issue so should be easy enough to work nothing too fancy here all right the portion of the manifold that feeds air into the uh, the valve is complete at this point this is a uh, NPT threaded fitting which we've made up with this uh, NPT threaded fitting here plug right into the rear and uh, it shouldn't have any problem moving up and down here. It shouldn't be an issue. That's more than uh, typical travel in the mill seas. So, like I said initially, the whole concept here with, with the uh, compressed air manifold is I don't expect to be running it much. I did put most of my effort into the uh, flood coolant system. I don't expect to be running this system much as of right now, uh, so I'm not putting uh, as much cash into this as I typically would on a project. So this is you know, four dollars or whatever. It's a, it's a cheapie. I'm literally just throwing it up over the um, uh, the enclosure here on the back side and probably the most expensive single portions of it are the ball valve and then the lock line fittings that are going to be connected to the ends of the copper which will actually be supplying the air. I haven't confirmed that those will work yet. The uh, fitting is of course, or the nozzle is of course the smallest, that's a, I believe that's a sixteenth of an inch uh, nozzle there. 
But these are the, this is the fitting basically that I put on the back here. Just a uh, sweat fitting with the uh, NPT threads on the inside. And that's it. So I did initially think about putting in a, another T to uh, put a compressed air tap here for a, a blowgun on the inside, but I decided against that at this point, mostly to keep the weight off of the assembly here since it's only mounted here. Uh, figure that's not all that high priority anyway. When I'm ready to run it, uh, ready to clean up, I'll just bring the compressed air in and then blow it off that way. My air compressor sits over to the side there, so I normally just hang the hose on the front and then use it that way. So I skipped it for now. Uh, maybe if I do a better compressed air manifold in the future, I will set it up then for a, a better compressed air uh, blowgun setup. All right, so I've got a tool loaded. Uh, this is not the tool I typically use for steel, but it's close enough. Um, and I figured I'd take a look at my arrangement about what height I wanted the end of this uh, this nozzle to come to. Uh, the other one, I'm going to have it about 180 degrees out here. There we go. Cap's getting in the way here. Uh, so it should be sitting right about in this vicinity here. Maybe up a little bit higher, I don't know, but it looks like it's a pretty good fit for the size hose I have. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up the manifold now. The manifold is complete and it's mounted to the head right now. Not quite as stable as I had been hoping for. Let's see if I can demonstrate that here. Not not too big of a deal, but shouldn't be an issue when it's running. I don't think this will provide enough load on there as it's uh, coming down to cause a problem. Uh, again, the design is that it's going to have a manual on-off valve, so the uh, system won't be computer controlled at all. Uh, still haven't hooked the nozzles up. This one's a little bit more low than I would like. I really wanted the, uh, the fitting here to be flush with the bottom of the mill head. Uh, the only way I had to do that, though, was to jog it up and then back down, and I wasn't interested in going through all that trouble. So uh, it is what it is. The uh, air supply hose is tossed over the back. It's, that's exactly how I intended it to be. Certainly not fantastic looking, and I may do something to improve that later, but for right now it's uh, what it is. So now it's time to put some Teflon tape on the lock line fittings and thread them into the manifold. All right, the nozzles are hooked up. Uh, I decided to reroute the compressed air line. A couple reasons. Makes it a little bit easier to connect and disconnect the uh, air hose, since the idea of this is that it comes on and off whenever the uh, flood coolant system isn't being used. Uh, but that's essentially it here. The um, only thing left at this point is to test it. I have have done a quick leak check and I did find one. Turns out if you don't use Teflon tape on a fitting, uh, it's going to leak. Some surprise there. So here we go. I got the uh, uh, compressor or the pressure regulator at set at 50 psi. Seems to be doing pretty well. So no apparent leaks, nothing obvious at least, and everything appears to be working well. Getting ready to run this part right here. Uh, it's actually a checking fixture. The uh, first one I made was a little bit undersized due to tool deflection, etc. So I'm running another part right now uh, that's a little bit bigger. Uh, the slot has been changed in length and width to be sure that it comes out to be the right size. So I'm going to uh, do the test run. As you see, the compressed air nozzle system is in place. The uh, no air in the system right now, but um, getting ready to test that for the first time uh, for a run. So here we go. All right, the fly cutter is loaded to serve off, surface off the top of the part, and I'll get the air started here, and we'll get this thing going.
Which looks decent. I'll do a spool change and load the next part. Or load the next uh, tool. Alright, the next tool is loaded. I'll switch on the air and get it started.